today I'm sparkling. And you're gonna say, why are you sparkling today? I don't know. I haven't worn this shirt before and I thought it's October. It's actually raining in Houston today and I think it's perfect reason to sparkle. So I'm gonna sparkle. Today, I have three main things we're gonna do. This is gonna be kind of a short video. My stepdaughter is getting married in November and this weekend is one of her bridal showers. So I needed to keep this one kind of short so I can edit it in time to get out to y'all. It won't be a super long one, but this is one I'm a little bit nervous about making because the books that I'm going to talk to you about today, one of them I'm not a huge fan of. I'm a little bit nervous to tell you that. So before I jump into what I'm scared to tell you, I will show you what I made from my mystery cowl that I started last week. Now this is the Irene Strange and Arelli Designs mystery cowl that they've started for Halloween. And it is called the Amigurumi School of Magic. And this is year five. And every Friday they drop a group of patterns for you to make for the week for the entire month of October. And they are a mystery until you get them, which I love surprises. I love to be surprised, so I was happy with this. Now last week I showed you the little frog and he's very pukey and sad, but he's fine. He's fine. And this week in the cow, it was a little fox. They have written like a little story that goes along. It's almost like a treasure hunt that you're going on through the story. And this week there's this little fox. I have named him Robert Red Fox, similar to Robert Redford, except it's Robert Red Fox. And because he's quite debonair, he his nose is not as protruding as I would like. It's very stubby. I don't know whether that was me doing something wrong or not stuffing it right. I'm not sure, but his his nose is not as extended as I would think it should be. But I think overall he's very cute. The head and body are all made in one piece and then you make the arms and legs and sew them on separately along with the tail and it has a little bit of jacquard here in the tail that is fun. Then he's got this little satchel. They also give you a little map you can print out and I think you can roll that up and put it in here. But y'all, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna go to that extent in my working of everything. There is no need for me to be printing off maps for this little guy, he's fine. He does not need the map. And we've had a talk, he's fine with it. He can get to where he's going without the map. It's okay. The other thing there's a lot of that I'm not a huge fan of that I will not be doing all the time is embroidery. And it's optional, you don't have to do it. And I'm not gonna do it on everything that they say to do it on because I don't like it. I'm not good at it and I don't like to do it. It won't be on everything they suggest. Just know this going forward. He has this little satchel and this is supposed to be like a branch with leaves. I don't think it looks anything like that. It's the right colors though. The next thing is a compass that you make. And this is very cute. Also, my daughter spilled wine, my wine. She was showing me something. My wine spilled and it wasn't my Snoop Dogg because I'd already finished Snoop Dogg. This is making it seem like I'm a lush. I'm really not. I very rarely drink, but it seems like whenever I do, somebody does something to take away what I'm drinking. And so my daughter did it this night by knocking my wine over onto my finished pieces. I was able to get it off, but it still has a nice smell. So if it smells like wine, I can at least inhale my wine this way. This compass has an N, E, a five for South, because I can't embroider, and a W that really, we're stretching the imagination on that looking like a W as well. But it's here, I think we have an idea of what it is. And I did that. You could make these little leaves. So I, it didn't give a number, I made five. And I also believe I did these wrong. I thought they looked right one way, they suggested another way, so I went with the lesser of two evils and the one that required less work, which was my way, and that's what I stuck with. So mine requires less work than theirs. It's still the same leaf, just with one less step. 
and that is slip stitching down the middle of the leaf. And I, I didn't want to. I thought it looked better without the slip stitch, so I didn't. Now the last thing that was in the pattern drop for this week was this, I don't know, is it a bucket, a basket, a bowl? I don't, I don't really know. I think eventually there's gonna be a lid. I think there's something new with it every week that we do to this. I think in the end this holds everything we're making, which I think is really cool. I like that. And it is just going around and around in a circle. And y'all, I love going around and around in a circle. There is just something so calming about that. I don't have to think, I'm not counting. It is just wonderful. So I enjoyed making this. They also wanted us to embroider a constellation on the bottom of this or on the inside. I couldn't really tell. And that's a no. It's on the bottom or on the inside of this. You could do it, they suggested, in glow-in-the-dark threads. I'm not going to do that. It is in the bottom of something or it is on its bottom and you would never see it. That's a lot of work for nobody to see it. I didn't do it. You could do it though if you wanted to do it, but I didn't want to do it, so I didn't do it. Overall, I really enjoyed making it. It was fun. I can't wait to see what drops this week. There's a story that goes along with it. I think it's going to be really cute once you put all the pieces together and figure out the mystery. Now, I need to go ahead and get this part over with and A lot of y'all like to drink fancy drinks and hot teas and really look very cool. And here's something that I'm probably gonna disappoint some of y'all with is I hate hot tea. I mean, I really don't like it. It hurts my teeth and it makes me hot and it doesn't relax me because then I'm sweating. It is not a calming thing for me, but I wanted to fit in with y'all. So I got a coffee mug. It is one of my children's Grogu. They got this for Christmas, and I thought it would be a cute addition up here in the craft room. And I have some carbonated ice water because I like bitter, bubbly water. It's really one of my favorites, unless it is a fruit juice with alcohol. I also really like that, and wine. I do enjoy that also. But water is really my favorite drink. Once again, I'm not lying. I love water. That's about all I drink, it's water and water. So I was going to try to look fancy and stress drink while I prepare to tell y'all what I feel about this next book. And the reason I'm stressing about this is because this person, she's very popular and I think she's amazing. She really is. She's done so many neat things and really gotten a lot of people very interested in crochet. And for that, I'm truly thankful. She's wonderful. My problem is I don't like the way she writes patterns. There, I said it, I said it. I don't like the way she writes patterns. And that person is Sarah Zimmerman. And this is her new book, Crochet Cute Forest Friends. And I'm so sorry. The creations are very cute. And let me start by telling you all the good things. Lots of adorable little critters. I love the butterfly, the deer, the caterpillar. Part of the thing I really like is the majority of the pieces she crows the heads and the bodies all at once. I love that. If I don't have to sew on a head, I am so happy and she does them all in one piece and in her first book which was this one crochet cute critters she does not do that the more majority of those the head is separate from the body this was actually my very first crochet book and i have very mixed feelings about that and i'll tell you why let me go ahead and think about how i'm going to tell you why here's my problem for one, she does the slip stitch chain one on all of her pieces, and I am fundamentally against that. I had someone in some of my comments tell me that people used to do that a lot in patterns. When this all kind of first began, they would do the slip stitch and chain one, but I think we've progressed to know that that's not really always necessary. And so I don't like that that is in a beginner book, because to me it's kind of starting somebody off on an idea that's really not used in the wider scheme of things. So that's my first issue, is I really don't like that. Another thing is I was looking through her stitches guide and when she does her decrease, 
she doesn't use an invisible decrease. She shows a regular decrease, which is not necessarily the best way to do a decrease. And that I have a problem with. I think you should, if you're starting somebody off in a craft, you should start them off in best practices. And to me, that's not best practices. Next, she never uses the word increase in any of her designs. And I think you should use the word increase. I think just saying two crochet can sometimes be confusing. And I know she's not the only one to do that. I've done many patterns where they say two single crochet instead of increase. And I don't like it when they do that either. I think you should say increase because I think it can get confusing if later on down in a pattern you are making two single crochet and you don't know whether it's an increase or you're making two separate single crochet. So I think you should start off by using the terminology increase. Her patterns are definitely different than any others I've made. And that is part of why I don't think this is a great beginner book is because it's not best practice. And I don't like that. Yes, the pieces are easy, but the majority of the patterns a beginner is gonna see don't look like this. And you're not doing a slip stitch chain one and you are seeing the word increase and then I just have issues. There's my problem. Now from this book though, I mean the designs are very cute. They are very doable, they're easy to work. Just know the patterns are very different. What I made is this little guy and it's a little owl and he's very cute. He was fun to work up. I love that she builds the head and the bodies together. It's not in every piece because of the way the designs are, it's not possible with every piece, but the majority of the pieces in the book are built as one. And then you just have to sew on the arms and legs and the little ears. One of my favorite things is a caterpillar. That entire caterpillar is one thing. You are not having to sew those balls together. That is all one piece. The only thing you're sewing on are the legs and I think it has antenna. That's it. Everything else is one piece and I love that. I've gotten it out of the way. <sighs> the next book I did, I really did enjoy. And this particular designer, this is her first crochet book. She actually has two other books that are about sewing but this is her first crochet amigurumi book. And it is Amigurumi Made Easy by Mariska Voss Bullman. This is a very cute book. I really enjoyed it, very easy. It's very much a beginner book, but very cute patterns. The bee in here, there's an otter I really wanna make. I really wanna do her owl, I love owls. There's her little flamingo I think is adorable. Very cute patterns. A lot of these, the heads are made complete as one piece, and then you sew it onto the body. Lots of great pictures. She does great step-by-step. Step. It's just a very well-written book. I do recommend this book. And from it, I made this little guy. I've named him Jerry, Jerry Mouse of the Tom and Jerry fame. And he is very cute. And you are never going to believe what yarn this is. You're never, you're not gonna guess it. This yarn is my Crochet Society Advent Calendar yarn from last year that I hated the colors and I couldn't finish. Also, I don't like granny squares, so there was that, but I hated the color combinations. And do you see what colors he is? Do you see why I might have disliked the colors? But they make a beautiful mouse and I loved crocheting this little guy with that yarn. If you did the Crochet Society Advent box last year and you also did not enjoy what was being made and you still have your yarn, use it for your amigurumi. It was a dream. I used a 2.75 hook and I think he turned out so cute. I love him. My only thing is, like I said, I hate sewing on heads to bodies. I rarely get them exactly like I want them. The nice thing about sewing an entire head onto a body. You won't get the next seam that you get when you sew an open head with an open body. That is nice. You're not gonna have to worry about that separation, but trying to get the head just right is hard. And I didn't. He looks a little bit like those Egyptian people where they were incestuous and they had those misshapen heads because people were doing things with each other and they were family and they shouldn't have been doing that. And it caused their heads to be weird he has a little bit of that. And I think that's to be expected in the mouse world. 
you know, there's a lot of them. They are all bound to be related to each other at some point. I mean, you're going to find a sister, cousin, brother around there somewhere. And that might have happened here. He might have a little bit of that head irregularity. Overall, though, I had fun making him. He was very easy, very cute, great instructions. Her patterns are wonderful beginner patterns, some to intermediate. If you haven't gotten this one, I do suggest adding it to your library. I hope today's video has been somewhat helpful and informative. I think it's important to be honest and be truthful and telling you what I think about the books because I was kind of scared. I was kind of scared. That's why I'm drinking. I was thinking of bringing the wine, but I thought it could, this is a family channel. I shouldn't be drinking wine. So we're just going to drink bubbly water out of Grogu and call it a day. Thank you so much for being here with me today. And I look forward to seeing you next time here on The Roomy Mill. Bye.